The Conistar Productions, in cooperation with Actors for Change, presents... Total as a monument, and my hope can reach to the sky. And my strength, my strength is my desire, and my dreams can help me fly. And the twistings of each road I'm on make me open up my eyes. Joy and sorrow are awaiting me at each turn as they arrive. Each Turn by Bill Olson. Starring John Tanzander's Jeff Adams. Episode 5. Where is the ticker tape? Just a minute. Hi, Purse. Hi, Jeff. Come on in. Have to grab your pen. Grab your pad. What's up? Twins won the World Series. <laughs> Sorry, I really don't follow sports. Don't follow sports myself. But you want me to write something about it, right? That's about it. I hate sports. I don't use the word hate very often, but I hate sports. They feed egos and they glorify violence and drug use. You're from Eau Claire, Jeff. Not much violence there. There's violence everywhere, Purse. I was beat up all the time after school and during school. It was horrifying being a kid. I had absolutely no control over my fate. Sports promotes the same violence I was subjected to, so I'm not promoting sports. You're right. You don't promote. That's right. I do. No, no. By writing, you write. By promoting, you promote. I see. Separate. So, by writing about the Twins winning the World Series, I'm not promoting them. I'm just writing about them. No. Okay. You write what you write. I suppose that's what I do anyway, Purse. I wish it would lead to something, though. I'm tired of rejection slips. Well, you write. You write the Jeff Adams word. Not the Twins word. Not the World Series word. That still doesn't leave me with much. I just don't have enough interest in sports to have much to say about it. Then hit the parade. You mean walk through the streets? The parade. Convertibles, ticker tape. Check it out. Ah, so they're having a ticker tape parade. <laughs> You two, you are fun to listen off of. Purse, we have to catch the bus in a few minutes. Okay, Gruffy. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Gruffy. You have to be... You just have to be patient with Purse. He takes, well, sometimes a little while to tell his thinking. I'm patient. So, you're going to the ticker... So, you're going to the ticker tape parade? I suppose I will. I've never been to one before. When I was growing up, they were only something on TV. I suppose I'll get something out of it to write about. Something. It's the way to go. Yeah, a once-in-a-lifetime thing. It almost makes me want to call my sister. She's a big Twins fan. That's nice, bringing his sister to the parade. Gruffy, I said almost. She's never been very nice to me. It's the woman thing. Shut up, Purse. Actually, with her, it's just the big sister beating up on her little brother thing. In fact, it's not even that. It's just the Judy Adams thing. I suppose I should say the Judy Sorensen thing since she's divorced. Oh, invite her, Jeff. It might make peace, you know. Peace? She'll hate my place. So take a chance. It's not a chance. I know exactly what'll happen. Nothing will be right. She'll complain about everything. Her problem. Purse is right, Jeff. It'll be her problem. You can at least say you tried, you know. Yeah. Besides, I might get lucky and she'll get hit by a bullet. Judy, it's Jeff. Mom isn't home. Actually, I called to talk to you. I hope it's to apologize for all the disrespect you've shown me. I've never been disrespectful of you. You're always disrespectful of me. I'm going to defend myself against your damn put-downs. If you don't like it, then it's too bad. If you were strong like real men, you could take it. I hope it's no mystery to you why you're divorced, because it's certainly no mystery to anyone else. I divorced him. I'm sure he would have stayed with you the rest of his life if you hadn't. Yes, he would have, because he knew when he had a winner. A winner? I've never heard of that brand of tennis shoe. It was his brand of wife, Jeff. It sure was when you divorced him. That's the only time he ever really won. I haven't seen you on any hot dates for a while. I just... Not any cold ones, either. 
You couldn't get a date with a blow-up doll. I know. Okay. So what's up anyway? Well, you like the twins, and they're having a ticker tape parade for them here. I thought you might want to come the night before, stay overnight, and we can go see the parade together. Or separately, if you wish. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. Well, here we are. I know it's not much, but it's all I can afford. You mean this is where you expect me to spend the night? I have to sleep here every night. Well, you're a dimwit. Think of it as camping. Okay, it's just for one night. One night in the basement of an outhouse? Maybe you feel at home here, but I don't. In fact, you belong in a place like this, Jeff. What do you want then? You want to go to a motel? I didn't bring enough money for that, unless, of course, you could borrow me some. Sorry, if I had more money, I'd buy health insurance. I'd think you'd move out of this stinking rat hole. That right there would save your health. Look at this. The Cramdens lived in a nicer place. You better move somewhere nicer before Mom and Dad find out about this. I only get $106 a week from the restaurant. I'm lucky I'm not living in that dumpster out back. A hundred six? How can you live on that? My neighbors told me about a church that serves free meals. Don't they give you free meals at the restaurant? They don't even give an employee discount. I have to bring a sack lunch. I hope it thoroughly embarrasses the manager when people see me eat it, too. That's disgusting. Well, Judy, it's his own fault. If he's not going to treat his employees like people, then he can certainly... That's what I mean, to pay you 106 a week and then expect you to pay full price for a meal in there. Hell, I wouldn't eat his food either. I hope the customers think there's something wrong with it. It wouldn't change anything anyway. You know how business managers are. No, as a matter of fact, I do not. Why not tell me? You really want me to? You have nothing to say that would surprise me anyway. You and your socialist BS. It's not BS. Try making a living in the real capitalistic world and you'll see what it's like. I know all about your it. Your idea of capitalistic success is suing your ex-husband for alimony so you can study for a master's in business administration. Communism is dead, Jeff. It's... I'm not a communist. It's dead. I'm not a communist because communism is a type of dictatorship just as sure as fascism. I support freedom. Capitalism is freedom. Capitalism is greed and exploitation. It was capitalism that created slavery. Not all capitalists believed in slavery. You're right. George Washington was against it because it started to become uneconomical. What a great humanitarian. Laissez-faire equates with freedom, Jeff, because when the... Freedom for business managers, not for workers. The freedom for... Not for workers. Everyone to become a business manager. That freedom only exists for the wealthy. For everyone. Try starting a business without capital. The only way poor people can control their own destiny is by having a government that's behind Marx's them. Marxist state. Their bosses won't give an inch to help them support their families. What about their children? Hi, Jeff. I heard you jabbing about the way things are. That's the longest sentence Persis spit out in weeks. You really got him going. Come on in, Gruffy. Purse, this is my sister, Judy. Which one is Gruffy? And which one is Purse? I'm Gruffy. Gruffy Johansson. You can call me Gruffy. This is Purse. Purse Gullickson. My real name's Mort. Prefer purse. How do you see with those sunglasses? Mm, don't. Not much to see anyway. Purse wanted into your debate on business. Great. I'm getting ganged up on by the welfare class. Don't want it. Purse means he, well, he likes working better than welfare. It gives the knack. What? The knack. Purse means working makes it easier to survive in life. Then why didn't he say so? Well, that's... That's just the way Purse talks. You have to love him. Don't you guys think he's cute? Cute? He didn't say anything. Yeah, I like that in a man. You know, we need to get to bed. So do we. Yeah, well, come on, Purse. Nice to meet you, Judy. Bye, Jeff. You must feel right at home with those dingbats. You'd get further in life, Judy, if you'd be nice to people. I'm not playing those games. They're dingbats. And you're a dimwit. Now, 
Why not tell me where you expect me to sleep? Sleep in the toilet for all I care. Great. It's nice to feel welcomed by my little brother. Yeah, yeah. You bring your sleeping bag? Yeah. Then you have a choice, the mattress or the bag. I'll take the one you don't choose. Why the hell would I want to sleep on that dirty old mattress? It's been in the attic for 20 years. Then sleep in your damn sleeping bag. I'm sick and tired of your whining. Fine. What is it? There are ah! What? Bugs! Bugs are crawling over my face! Uh-oh, I forgot about that. Forgot about that? How could you forget about something like that? What kind of bugs are these? Cockroaches. I'm getting the hell out of here. Judy, it's three in the morning. I don't care what time it is. I'm getting out of here. You are a crazy fool, a nut, Jeff. You sleep here with cockroaches crawling all over your face, and it's just an everyday little thing. You are an idiot. Judy, damn it, you'll wake the neighbors. Who cares? I'd be doing them a favor, Jeff. Don't you see? There are cockroaches crawling all over my face. God, this is disgusting. What if they dropped stuff on me? Oh, God, I've got to wash my face. Where's the light? Oh, God. Oh, God, they're everywhere. Jeff, they're everywhere. What the hell kind of place do you have me in? Oh, God, I'm going to throw up. I'm going to throw up. What's that? Firecrackers. They are not. They're shooting. Oh, God, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Stay away from me, Jeff. Damn it. I want you to get me out of this place right this minute. Do you hear me? And go where? We're going to go out to a safe suburb and sit there in the car until the parade. Oh, geez, you know that's going to be another five or six or so. Right now, get me out of here. Okay, damn it, get dressed. I've never seen so many people before in my life. Look at that. Guys sitting on top of traffic lights. And open alcohol containers. <laughs> I don't see very many cops. This is scary. I feel like I'm in the middle of a sleeping mob that could erupt at any time. And the cops... Yeah, the cops can't do a thing about it. Well, I can't see anything from back here. Maybe we should just go home and watch it on TV. I am not ever returning to that dungeon of yours. There's probably a rotting human corpse somewhere in that place. Getting eaten by the cockroaches. Oh, God. Jeff, would you stop it? Come on. Hey, let us through. Excuse us, we're coming through. No, I don't think so. We need to get through and... We got here three hours before you, so tough luck. Okay, okay, we're leaving. Maybe if we walk on a little further, we'll find a way to get closer. Good idea. Let's try down this way. Well, here we are, right at the streets. This is going to be great, Jeff. Yes? Thanks for... You're in my way, bitch. Who are you calling a bitch? You and your wimpy boyfriend. You can get in the back or we'll throw you back. We're not in your way. You can see just fine over my head. They look mean, Judy. Maybe we better go. I have a right to be here. You got a right to die for it, too. We are not even in your way. It's the principle of the thing, bitch. You have no right to call me that. Here comes a car. Opportunity knocks. Ah! Jeff, help! Judy! Judy! Hey, Wimp, you better call an ambulance, because we ain't leaving our spot. Judy! Judy, are you all right? I don't know. I... Better I, walk, Wimp, before she dies. I have to help my sister. I'll help her. I got the tools. <laughs> help! Help! Put me down! Someone, help! Help! Put me down! Jeff, where are you? Jeff! Jeff! Oh, God! <laughs> Jeff! Oh, God! Jeff! Jeff! Judy! Judy. I've been looking everywhere for you. We have to get you to the hospital. They tried, they tried to, oh God, they tried to rape me. Right in the middle of, in the middle of the street with thousands of people watching. They pushed me in front of a car. I saw that, I'm sorry, Judy. And then they tried to rape me and everyone laughed. They're monsters. 
nothing but a bunch of drunken, vicious monsters. I know. Thank God it's over. I want to. I just want to go. To go home. That's all I want. I want to go home. I'll get you home. Not to your home? No, I'll drive you back to Eau Claire. I'll never watch another Twins game as long as I live. I can hardly walk. I must have broken something when they... When should, that car hit me. I should get an ambulance. I'll be in debt for two years. Just call a cab. We have to tell the press about this. I'm a writer. Has something happened I don't know about? What do you mean? Like, have you actually sold something? Um, well, we'll call a TV station or something. I want everyone to know about this. Everyone. No, I didn't see any trouble at the ticker tape parade. Well, I saw a lot of it. Just a lot of people having fun. A lot of irresponsible drunks. That's not what I saw. So, you won't do a TV news story about this? I think you should just go home and cool off. And what about my sister? They pushed her in front of a car and then laughed. Then they tried to rape her and nobody tried to stop them. I hope she's all right. Well, she lived. Whatever that means. But what about others? There were others pushed in front of cars. I heard it on the news. Are you telling me they were all pushed by accident? That's probably just what happened. I was there. I saw how they acted. They were monsters. You had a lot of people together in a small area. Naturally, there's potential for violence. They were a mob. And if violence is natural in such a circumstance, why was this parade allowed? The police had it under control. But that's just it. The police did not have it under control. Well, the public demanded it. Does that mean we have to create mobs? The public euphoria has to be vented. Oh, I know all about venting euphoria. I watched twin spans overturning cars in downtown Minneapolis on your TV news. There's a point when good, upstanding citizens have to say enough is enough. Because we're not talking about people dancing and singing songs. We're talking about assault and rape by people who applaud when it's happening. Don't you see? I can't do a story like that. But people's lives are at stake. Well, it's over. Over for now. But what about next time? Will we have to have more vandalism? More people pushed in front of moving cars? More sexual assaults? Look, the twins bring a lot of money into this community. Local TV news is not equipped to put that in jeopardy. Nor to alienate the millions of fans who live here. So that's what it comes down to. Money, image, and ratings. It's the way of things. No one cares about what's right and wrong, as long as it makes money. I'm not saying I disagree with you, but I have to operate within the rules whenever I get in front of that camera. You've got it pretty easy. You can always you can say anything you want in the privacy of a face-to-face -face conversation. I get off so easy because I'm in the privacy of depersonalization. A disease of urbanization and greed, a disease that keeps me honest, because I have to satisfy, because I don't have to satisfy sponsors, but it imprisons me in a dungeon where I have no power to control my destiny. Well, we're all in the same boat. Even the twins. Do you think the players want this violence, or the managers, the coaches, the staff of the World Series? Blame the guilty ones who actually did this. I can't without a venue. I can't give you one. So what do I tell my sister? Tell her I'm sorry. Dr. Cook to emergency. Dr. Cook to emergency. Hi, Judy. I talked with someone at one of the TV stations. The local stations? Yeah. So we're going to be on TV or what? No, they want nothing to do with it. I suppose I could call some other places. Local TV news is nothing but assembly line public service announcements. You might as well not waste your time, Jeff. So, you feeling better? Yeah. I never even got to see the twins. I was so scared. I knew from the moment I saw all those people that this wasn't right. Well, maybe you and I are privileged. We learned something about people that most people don't really know. We got to see the face of the Medusa and lived. A story for our grandchildren, if we ever have any. You'll probably have some, someday. I don't know why you couldn't get a date, Jeff. You have a lot going for you. Never tell that to a guy. I thought it was a nice thing to say. It's a stock expression that always comes from women I haven't got a chance with. You don't want a chance with me? I'm your sister. That's not the Dr. point, Vander Judy. Well, I wish you'd learn to make points. I just gave you a compliment, 
And you don't care. I care. It's just that women find it so easy to say, you have a lot going for you, and I'm still without companionship. Well, I'm sorry. I can't get you dates. I can't get myself dates. Yes, you can. Yeah, with jerks. Everyone's a jerk to you. Your standards are too high. Yours are too low. What with that slum you live in? Yeah, I, I wish I had a nice place where I could invite you over and not be ashamed. Invite me? You must be joking. Well, I would if you'd be nice to me. You're too soft. That's why you can't get a date. Women like strong men. And I'm just a wimp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was so scared when we got separated in the crowd. Me too. I'm sorry you had such a lousy time. Me too. Think we'll ever be friends? Yeah, but let's not tell Mom and Dad. Each Turn was produced, written, and directed by Bill Olson. The associate producer was John Tanzend. Episode 5, Where is the Ticker Tape, starred John Tanzend as Jeff Adams. Darley Mitchlink as Judy, Mike Phelps as Purse, Judy Gallus as Gruffy, Mal Jackson as the journalist, and Roxanne DeFlorin. The music was by John Wright. The theme was by Bill Olson and John Wright, and was sung by Robert Lilligren. Production assistance was by Chris Freeman. My name is Siobhan Parnicky. The producers wish to thank CTV Roseville and Cable Access St. Paul, both in Minnesota. Special thanks goes to Elizabeth Van Dam. All persons and situations in this radio drama are fictitious. Any similarities to actual persons, living or dead, is strictly coincidental. Each turn is copyrighted 1996 by Bill Olson.